If it's heads, I'll do it here. If it's tails, supermarket. Tails. Which means there's gonna be a yes. besides my own. I originally intended to conclude my iceberg series with this video. However, Randy's story took me on an unexpected journey. It's a tale of loneliness and misunderstanding, where the signs of his mental state went unnoticed by those closest to him. As Randy's isolation and depression deepened, he became increasingly detached from reality. His perception of life was completely out of touch, where fictional characters from the Danny Phantom cartoon became his goddess and wife. This detachment eventually evolved into anger and hatred, leading to his tragic descent into obsession with death. In this video we will delve into the Randy suicide tapes and the diary entries to gain an insight into his personality, thoughts and delusions. It's an unhitched story, I wanted to dedicate a whole video. The remaining YouTubers will be covered in the next one, I promise. But now let's take a look at the unhinged story of a Danny Phantom fanboy. Our story starts in a cold September when on the 17th, 1992, Randy Stair was born in Pennsylvania, the first child of Robert and Laureen Stair, along with his younger brother Jeremy. If we could describe his childhood in one sentence, it would be probably described by loneliness. According to his videos and diary, he didn't have a good relationship with his parents either, especially with his dad, which will be covered as the story unfolds. A thing to mention is that Laureen Stair, his mother, also shares the same last name as the founder of the trench coat mafia, whose members were responsible for the infamous Columbine school shoot. Randy was also developing an unhealthy obsession with this event, but also with the shooters, often glorifying them and their actions on more than one occasion. When they got arrested for breaking into a van and all this, but they were generally good kids, and people don't see that. They see them as these monsters that just killed people in their high school and wanted to blow the entire place up and kill as many people as possible. But deep down, they were victims. And I started to realize this and I just got attracted to them. Not like in a sexual way or anything, but I just grew fucking in love with them. And they became my role models. They became my inspiration. And that's not good by society's standards. If you start showing affection and sympathy for fucking high school shooters, you're gonna be fucking locked up. Randy as a child always felt he didn't belong and it was very hard to make any friends, often revolving that he would only socialize in school as after school he would go home to parents he didn't like so much. But there was one boy who Randy would call a friend and that was Matthew, a neighbor kid whom he spent a lot of time with and even made videos together. These videos, where they were 12 years old, were also uploaded by Randy on his channel. It's definitely a horrific scene to see Randy as a child just running and having the purest form of fun a child could have, but knowing what he would eventually do just makes this scene very surreal. Their friendship would ultimately grow apart as Matthew would find a girlfriend. Randy felt a bit disappointed and angry at that. He hated the idea that Matthew would focus his attention more on his girlfriend than him. He wasn't gay, he just said he hated the idea he wasn't in the focus anymore. As children low cartoons, Randy wasn't much different and would spend much of his time diving into the world of cartoons and TV shows, often fantasizing about being one of the characters. I guarantee a lot of you reading this feels somewhat similar to me. I'm not a psychopath. I'm a trapped soul eager to get out. Only I want to have some fun before going out. Eric Harrison was not a psychopath. He wanted to fit in, make friends, get laid, have a good time. He was just in the wrong crowd and a group of kids. He was an outcast who shouldn't be respected. I am the same way. Only I am shy and less outgoing. I wanted to make friends desperately. But all I ended up was seeing the bad in people. Matthew was the only legit friend from the 1st to the 4th grade. By the time the 12th grade rolled around, I maybe had two people who were legit friends, James and Chris. 
By high school, I just stopped trying to make friends. The whole grade knew me, but I was just there. I'd get picked on now and then, but nothing major. This isolation and love for cartoons made him venture into filmmaking, and the decision was made. He wanted to make a YouTube channel. He started a channel in 2007, which was ultimately shut down to copyright reasons, but he eventually created a Pioneers production channel on the June 9, 2008, at 15 years old. Well, the things you could see on his channel were something well expected from a 15 year old boy, as his videos were mostly comedy sketches, loosely tied together with no strong plot or a style to keep them together. He would also mimic the most popular YouTubers at the time, like the angry video game nerd, because he would swear a lot, and also he would mimic Fred, the very first YouTuber who managed to get 1 million subs, which was one of the first channels who managed to capitalize on the young audience on YouTube. He would try hard to make it on YouTube, doing collaborations and improving on his editing style. The first breakthrough Randy had was when he got the attention of a YouTuber called Make Me Bad 35 and they made a video about his wooden alligator. This video would get around 50k, which is a quite nice number for the time. The success of this video was never replicated on his channel and it made Randy very angry that the only video that was a success, sort of, was because he did a collab with someone. Also, Make Me Bad 35 was a guy with whom Randy stayed in touch for years as they would often play Xbox Live games together. Now his channel would be later set around three characters. Froggy, Whale and Mr. Horsehead. It's quite something, I know. Especially as the whale would hit on Randy with a deep voice, which, which was sometimes funny actually. But his biggest wish came true in 2011 when he became an official YouTube partner and he could finally monetize his channel. Because one of the wishes Randy had was to become a movie director and he would invest all his money in his channel to make even better videos. But there was things behind the nice YouTube facade that troubled this young mind. And that was mostly his second hobby, which was stealing and wearing clothes from his mother. I've been attracted to girls since I was in the late 9th or even very start of the 10th grade, around 2009. I have never once been into guys, so I'm thankfully not bisexual. That would suck being caught in the middle. 10th grade was when I grew fond of wearing female clothes. Of course, being in a house with only one brother and father, I had to start by wearing my mom's clothes. It felt so wrong, but I became obsessed with wearing a bra, especially after Amber Face started in 2010, which obviously was never a face. Quite often when I had the house to myself, I would either A. Film a YouTube video or B. Cross dress. I must have been a master at putting things back exactly how they were because my mom never said anything. He would also state in his diary that he wasn't interested and would never use girls for sex as this was disturbing and disgusting. As he grew up older he would eventually stop to make any friends. This is the time where he would also start to increasingly think about suicide as this was the only way out from this rotten world. It didn't help that two events happened in his life which led him even on a darker path. The first one was about a guy he barely knew, it was a guy from his brother's class. He had a car accident. One day he was going to the school and before going on the highway he lost control of the vehicle, crashed and died immediately. This left Randy stunned as this is a thing that could easily happen to him as he was taking this route every day. Randy would also visit at least once a year the crash site. This event left him quite numb and motionless, but not sad. The second event broke him, and that was the death of his friend Matt. He was perhaps the only friend at the time who enjoyed his content and liked being around. This event happened during the spring break, and Randy wasn't aware that this happened at all. He thought that he wasn't simply online, and that they would meet in the school as usual when the break is over. Sadly, this wasn't the case. Randy said that this f***ed him up real good and everything changed since then. The worst part is, nothing went noticed by his parents and that bothered him even more. My parents don't seem to have a f***ing clue as to what goes on in my head. 90% of time, I am as pale as a f***ing lifeless corpse. In the end, if my mom says, I had no idea she was depressed, or why didn't I see the signs, or fuck ever, then you should just stab yourself in the f 
fucking chess for being so stupid. I mean honestly. I don't go anywhere unless I have to, I don't speak to anyone unless spoken to, I make zero friends by choice, I dress from head to foot in black, even my bra and leggings are black. Find those yet? What about my black panties? Haha, <laughs> I always look like a ghoul sucked the joy and happiness out of my face. 2013 was a year in his life where everything started to fall apart, his PC broke, he was also involved in a car accident even though nothing major happened, it still shook him up. And to make it even worse his granddad also died. As Randy wanted to move on with his videos in a new direction, he decided to kill the three characters from the previous show by stabbing them. He was so in character that he managed to cut his finger so badly he needed injury and one of his fingers would be permanently bent because of it, but just lightly. It was the time he really hit rock bottom. But there was one thing, or better to say character, that would change his life forever, but not in a good way. The creators of the show who made Fairly Odd Parents made also a show called Danny Phantom. Since it released in 2004, it managed to get a quite cult following, and one of the biggest fans was Randy. This is the point in time we could say that Randy's mental health started to decline rapidly. In the show there was a character who was only in the show just for a few episodes, and that was Amber McLean. Her character is portrayed as a ghost type rock star who uses music as a sonic weapon creating waves that could kill people. I know, a weird concept, but bear with me. What important is, Randy fell in love with her. Maybe love is even a too soft word to use. There are very few images that truly change my direction in life like Amber and the dazzling tents have. I physically can't go more than 12 hours without looking at Amber. Her eyes, her body, they just pull me in like a metal on a magnet. That image of her floating with a guitar and evil grin changed my life forever. There was also a song in the show performed by Amber and Randy could not stop listening to it. As we mentioned in the beginning, he never had a real relationship and apparently she was the one for him. Friends would often joke about this. B35 would often tell that Amber is his queen, but he didn't care about this, as this was actually true. His obsession with Amber would spill into his YouTube series as well. He made even an alternative universe like a spin-off series to Danny Phantom called Ghost Squad. It's also the time where he made one more video where he looked at his past and burned some of his belongings as a type of a farewell to the old ways as he would kill himself with a gun at the end of the video. As we previously mentioned he had some problems with his gender and he was feeling like a woman stuck in a man's body. I guess you could say cross-dressing which is something you never knew I did. I was cross-dressing ever since high school. And that's something I've kept to myself my whole life. I never told anybody about this. And it's something that probably shocks you, but at the same time it's like, well, yeah, you never had a girlfriend or anything like that, so I guess it's expected. But um, the more I wore girl clothes, the more I felt like that was who I was. Like I felt like I was a girl, and I found out that I was. I was never meant to be a guy. I was just... A female soul trapped in a man's body my whole life and I couldn't tell you guys that because then that would lead to never-ending jokes and you know you can't live your life like that this is the time where he introduces us to the concept that members of the ghost squad are actually boys who have died and were reborn as pale dead girls this is just another way to see how Randy was obsessed with death and how he was struggling with his gender. Death, the most gorgeous, luscious thing about life. If there was no death, then life would literally be a purgatory. I can't emphasize how much death fascinates me, like an attraction, a sexual attraction. I mean, I don't wanna f a corpse that have been buried for six years. I'm no necrophiliac or anything, but death just sucks me in. I don't even feel alive anymore, no sunshine, no rainbows, no warm comfort emotions, just emptiness and darkness. I look at Mackenzie and Rachel and all of the others in the AGS posters on my wall and I just can't picture not being with them when I die. 
the thought of being able to touch their cold yet warm smooth white skin and smell the distinct aroma just makes my mouth water. I don't wanna screw them, I just wanna exist with them and hold them for all eternity. I envision the world around me fading away audibly and visibly into darkness. And then, after 10 seconds of pure darkness and silence, being to see Mackenzie standing inches away from my eyes, starting in profile, then a blur and finally coming into focus, almost like waking up from a surgical procedure in a daze. His mental state is definitely starting to hit rock bottom. Then he did something quite interesting. He decided to change his name to, to Andrew Blaze. It's actually funny. As we saw, Randy felt like a girl who was trapped in a man's body. But on the flip side, Andrew comes from a Greek word which literally translates to man. So yeah, well, I don't know what to say about this. This was yet again a way to sort of kill another era of his channel. He would then become more dark and more edgy, but not in a way you normally expect from a 20 something year old. I mean, if not for his mental state, he would probably be described as cringe. As the things we could see were just something you would expect from a 15 year old. He also made Twitter accounts for the squad where he would frequently comment on things, write messages and interact with one another, with him being the puppet master of all of the accounts behind the keyboard. He would try to recruit people to work on his animations as voice actor and animators. But some of the girls would often back out of his videos as they were too extreme. He also once did some animations from his brother's band, but nothing major. But the thing that was quite important is that he was preparing a special video that should be released just minutes before his shootout. But this also didn't work out as he planned. The video was supposed to be a version of the Columbine shooter but with Amber because of course. His obsession with that, dead girls and the squad didn't know any limits. But he would still publish this video just before the shooting even if some video lacked certain parts. Part, some parts were finished, others were just rudimentary animations and others were just storyboards. Randy stated that after 5 months of working on this project he couldn't bear to take another look at it. But this was much later in the story. We need to take a look at 2015 now. It's a year where he really decides something needs to happen to his life. But there wasn't any specific plan yet. Randy over time became more and more violent. He even thought about killing his family. Now, there were some thoughts that crossed his mind about if there were any consequences in the afterlife for killing so many people. But Randy was far from religious. I think this was all because of the attention he seeked and never got for them and that's why he just wanted to kill them. My mom could get a gun tomorrow and come home to find me dead the following day and would be 100% shocked that I commit suicide. Guaranteed, 100%. How she hasn't questioned me or seen the signs is beyond me. I sit at my computer completely isolated from the world. I never want to do anything with anyone. I hardly sleep. I eat very little or have severe debates on choosing food. I wear all black clothing from head to foot. I am severely underweight. I never exercise. I rarely smile. I never initiate a conversation unless spoken to 98% of the time. I am always quiet. I said I'm not participating in holidays or birthdays anymore. I'm purposely making zero friends, my face looks like a ghost and I always look depressed. You're f***ing blind and obvious. If I only had seen the signs. Yeah, well, you didn't. Too late. There isn't a force on earth that's going to keep me here past 2021. The clock is ticking and boy, I can't wait to get over with this. Soon. Soon. Just don't fuck my life in these few final years. If I get arrested then my life's over. I can't do this, patience won't be long. It really felt that Randy was seeking attention and just could not find a way how to talk with them. From my perspective, at first it made him sad and lonely, which ultimately over time evolved into hatred. But there was a quote in his diary that was like, some dark comedy shit. As we discussed, Randy obviously felt like a woman and later he didn't bother to care to hide his feminine shaving products and razors around the house. But nobody cared to ask him why are those things in the bathroom or actually anything about it. And suddenly Randy buys a shotgun and the response is just, ah, listen to this. My f dad is a worthless faggot. 
I buy a shotgun, quite possibly the manliest thing I have bought in my life. And when my mom told him, a shotgun, what the hell does he need that for? Just imagine your son dressed in black, who doesn't like to speak with people, who is always pissed off, starts to buy girl products all of a sudden, nobody gives a flying f Next thing he comes back home with a shotgun, and instead of being surprised you actually make fun of him, like, ooh, are you sure you know how to handle this? I mean this story is so surreal, it's like from an alternative universe. This is a very morbid part of the video. You see all the obsessions that Randy possessed led him on a path that he would obviously take his life. But the question was, should he go alone or take a few people with him? He then posted a video where he used a coin to decide his fate but also the fate of others. I'm gonna flip this three times. If it's heads, I'll do it here. If it's tails, supermarket. That's a tails. That's a heads. Ooh, one of each. Tension's building up. That is a tails, folks. Which means there's gonna be a yes. besides my own. Possibly more than one. That's fate. He flipped the coin three times and just like that it was decided. Randy will take the lives of some people before ending his own. Just imagine that the fate of the people who were killed by his hand were decided at that moment with a flip of a coin. And according to him it was just fate. Now I will introduce you to Rachel. She is a Mossberg 500 shotgun, but she wasn't enough and Randy bought another one who was called Mackenzie, named after one of the girls of the AGS squad. He would then start to record himself practicing, but also I found a video where he reacted to the post when he received a package full of shotgun shells. It is both hilarious and disturbing. Look at this! <laughs> Some of you who maybe follow morbid stuff on the internet know a bit more about the Columbine shooter. Well the weapons Randy possessed were the same used there as he was obsessed with them. But also the first shotgun was a gift from his mother, a thing that she would later regret stating to the news. But I don't know, me being from Europe, it is wild to think to make such a gift to your son. Randy would also sympathize with the Columbine shooters and said he knew their pain and hate towards the world. Randy also thought he would make a bigger impact and make thousands of people remember him. Randy would also thought he would inspire a cult after he dies and I don't wanna get into the speculation of how the AGS characters would later rule over the world because we need to draw the line somewhere with the length of this script. It is just crazy to think if I go through with this plan to kill my co-workers I'll make the news headlines. If I do in fact do this I'm gonna place AGS ghost stickers on the corpse. The squad and Harry slash Klebold are my drive. I'm going to give it a serious thought this spring slash summer and see what happens. I need shooting practice first. Can't just waltz on in there and expect him to light shit up. Gotta get you know your guns first. And just as important, your victims. I need a pump action shotgun that fires more than just one shell without having to reload. Over the last few years I had a strange feeling that I am meant to do something bad in the supermarket. I can't even see myself past 30s, you know? Not being able to see yourself as a true age adult. I felt that my whole life. Not being able to see myself older. I was meant to die young. The signs were so obvious and it's weird that nobody could prevent this. But this story is just one of many. Randy also stated in his diary that he simply doesn't know how his parents didn't manage to catch on. He desired attention badly and didn't know how to get it. And the shooting was the best idea so far to be famous. After all, people would speak his name all over the country. I always decided to be famous, to make a name for myself and inspire others. Sometimes you gotta do evil deeds to be famous. It's fate. Nothing more, nothing less. Granted shooting 2-3 co-workers in a store and taking your own life isn't nationally newsworthy, it gets your name out there. 
The problem was with the plane as he didn't eat much, he was almost a skeleton comparing his arms with the AMG drawings. So a crowded area would definitely be a bad idea as people would probably tackle him and stop him. And he would hate to see his name in the newspaper as he failed. So the plan to make the shootout in the supermarket was final. And he would be able to make a carefully constructed plan how to take everybody out. In the days prior to the shooting he would film the market and carefully plan out how to carry out the attack. Besides jerking off numerous times in different storerooms. I don't know if this was relevant but there you have it. It was something he did. But something was definitely sure. He would embrace that and he was ready to go out. If you want to end your life then just sit back and plan it out. Make sure it's foolproof. Not something that will leave you alive or paralyzed. If you want to shoot yourself, put the gun barrel in your mouth, not the side of your head. A shotgun is virtually foolproof. A pistol is pretty much 75-25 if you don't flinch after pulling the trigger. Sometimes you just gotta use the things around you. I'd leave hanging yourself as a last result. That's a harsh and slowly way to go. I'll forever suggest a shotgun in the mouth way. The Eric Harrison route. Unless you like flinch and rock the barrel forward and blow your nose and lips off. Those final seconds are going to be extremely nerve wracking. But in a way, I can't wait. I know Mackenzie will be on my side when about to do it. His love for the squad was stronger than ever and he simply could not wait anymore to meet them in the other realm. There are no fears, no worries, no remorse, no regrets, no future. Like it's if the light switch was turned off. I can't see 2018. All I see is Mackenzie, Amber and the ghost squad. Mackenzie always comforts me and talks me through the night and day. She's been the final missing piece of the puzzle besides Columbine. I love her more than anything. I'd rather spend eternity with her than anyone on this putrid planet. Girls on this planet are all the same. Impossible. Dead girls are perfect. There is no contest. I don't know where I should put this but I also wanted to state that this was written in 2017 so I think this was the right time to mention this because Randy was also kind of a racist. I mean not like a typical white boy talking trash but again Randy's fashion is completely a hinge so listen to this. I rather listen to a Japanese human for 24 hours straight than having to see her or deal with another Nick for the rest of my life. You're f luck you don't live in my world. F I'd make you cry for mercy until you die of old age. I got you from head to toe, stabilize, neutralize and hypnotize your bodies to prevent you from dying. Keeping you alive and consciously awake from the start to finish. So you can feel every ounce of flesh and bone, rapture, tear, break, bleed and crack and snap inside of your portrait bodies. Fuck all of you. I somehow wanted to include this as it's not like Randy was angry only at the world and society. I mean it in a way he didn't belong to the world and system and he was actively searching a way to get out of this modern world we live in. But this is a real statement that he had hatred towards certain people but also of course his family and co-workers. Well he definitely had some hate in his heart. But how is he thinking about murder and drink people is completely mad. I don't know another way how to describe it. So before we start to unravel the final day of his life, I want to quote the last page of his diary. I never forget those who changed my life. I can't take you all enough. Maybe I'll see you some of you soon. Remember, a life can be always worse. Somewhere out there, there are always a person worse off than you. Hopefully, you will be able to Rediscover yourself through simple times. It's time for me to go. Thank you. I always remember you. Farewell. This is the last diary entry three days before the shooting. June 8, 2017. As we start to cover the final day, I want to also mention the things he wore that day. It included a time to rise, white t-shirt, black work pants, AGS wrist pants, purple panties and a black bra. Because why not? So Randy arrived for his late night shift in the vase market in Pennsylvania. His plan was to trip the people in the store. So just around closing time at around 11 pm after arriving he went to the staff area and blocked the emergency exit at the back of the store. 
Continuing with his duties, he stocked, shelf and cleaned up things from previous day. At around 12.10 am, he did something we already talked about. He started to share all the videos which were labeled as suicide tapes. Saying things like, if you're watching this, I'm dead. I'm sorry, you know. And honestly, I've envisioned this day coming for as long as 10 years. I wanted to record this for you, mom, Jeremy, dad, and to help maybe help you better understand why I did what I did and how you didn't see it coming and all that and really just to talk to you one last time because obviously now I won't be able to. He would proceed then to block all of the exits and he would go back to the store where he had a duffel bag stockpiled with the weapons. That being the two shotguns we already mentioned, he would then start to walk around the store and everybody who would cross his path would end up shot. He managed to kill three employees. Then something quite weird happened. He would approach co-worker Kristen Newell, who had not heard anything because she was listening to music with her headphones, while she was labeling items and stalking the shelf. Stare was later seen on the CCTV surveillance camera footage standing behind Newell as she worked for about 5 seconds before just turning away and going to the next aisle. Randy would also start to shoot at glass and various merchandise within the store. He also targeted multiple small portable propane tanks, but they would fail to explode because of game logic, if you shoot them, they should explode. Meanwhile, New Will finally did get a grasp of what is going on and took the opportunity to flee by removing the displays at the store and breaking the glass door. She quickly ran outside and hid behind some bushes and dialed 911 for help. He finally realized it was time to go. Stair placed the loaded shotgun in his mouth and fired a single round through his head, killing him instantly. A total of 59 shots has been fired. All of the shotgun rounds fired came from only one of the two shotguns he brought. But um, anyways, I can guarantee you that none of you saw this coming. None of you would ever remotely expect me to do something like this. And I guarantee you can't believe that I could do something like this, you know. So, I know you could be thinking, like, you could have gotten help, you could have seen a psychiatrist, you could have gotten help. But the truth is, that wouldn't be me. Me being on medication, sitting in therapy. No. That alters who you are. It's not me. Never would be. I couldn't do that, and also I knew it wouldn't cure me, it wouldn't help me. Police arrived very quickly, just a few minutes later, where they would found three victims and ran this lifeless body. The victims were Victoria Bronk, who was a 25 year old girl and assistant manager at the store, but not only that, she was also a mother and a wife. Brian Hayes was a 47 year old Navy guy who was the night shift supervisor at the store. The last one being the 63 year old Terry Sterling, who also worked the night shift at that terrible day. The store was closed for one month because of this. It is also just horrible to think that Brian was a Navy SEAL, went to the war, survived and then he was killed by some lunatic who thought he would be reborn as an animated 16 year old girl. We do live in a weird world. When will this fruitless pathetic race wake up and realize there is no such thing as normal and see that you brainwashed to view social standards in a certain way. You live a lie every goddamn day of your life. You are not who you think you are. Don't let society turn you into one of them. Rebel, show up late at work, take long breaks, sleep in a little longer, write down your thoughts and desires, get your way when you gotta have it, blast loud music in your car, don't become one of them. Be you, the real you. Life should be worth living, but it's anything but. Randy's story is undeniably intriguing, yet it failed to leave the lasting impact he envisioned. Despite some coverage from fellow YouTubers, he didn't achieve the heights he hoped for. Signs of his inner turmoil were evident, but he received little attention or support, leaving him feeling isolated and neglected. 
The sense of detachment ultimately led to tragic consequences. His YouTube channel and AGS didn't blow up either. But Randy wasn't some super mastermind or someone who we should adore or glorify. It's a story that I think it needs to be covered. His life reflects the need for empathy and understanding, as even the small acts of kindness can make a significant difference to those in distress. Randy was a child trapped in a man's body. His interactions and views on the world felt like they were ripped off from a cartoon, because he didn't know any better. I know there were more things to touch upon at this story, but I think this video shouldn't be any longer than this. And I hope this 6k script did provide an insight in his life and personality. I hope you now understand why I wanted to cover this topic as a standalone video and not to write it off like an iceberg chart entry. We have only one more video before we really finish this iceberg chart. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. This would help me a lot to devote more time for YouTube and making videos like this. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can check out my Patreon or YouTube membership program. If you have any suggestions for more people that need to be covered, drop a comment. That's all from me now, I've been Snorky and until the next deep dive, stay safe.